Can you hear me now? Naveen? Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. I think Partha also has come. He has to unmute. Our host has to unmute him. Hi. Hi, guys. Dr. Pratap. Yeah, hi, Partha. Yes. Dr. Pratap, can you switch on your video, please? Yeah. Dr. Pratap, we need your video. Dr. Pratap. Yeah. Yeah, I have put on my video. It says you cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. It was a problem all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm unable to see your name. Which Pratap is it? I have to start a video. P R A. Yes, stop. Now try it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to all the physiotherapists who are really interested to know about this clinical practice guidelines during this <clears throat> pandemic COVID situations. I would like to put down here the real hard work and efforts by uh, Partha Saradi who have been literally ditching everyone for last one week to get along. A lot of points and discussions has been happened. Uh, the core committee team of BPN had uh, this work led by Dr. Partha Sarathi and Dr. Nandan, our president, Dr. Arti Prasad, Dr. David, and Dr. Ashan Nayak, and myself. We all involved in this. And here, uh, today we'll be having a wonderful panel discussions. We are blocked with limited numbers. We are not going to have too many participants here. It's going to be a serious talk. Those who want to just put this attendance and go away, it is of no use for you or for us. Please don't do that. Try to participate in full way. Raise your hands. I'll help you to give your answers. Whatever the questions you have, you post it here in the chat box. Moderator, Dr. Navin. Navin, hope you can take the questions also. Yeah, yeah. We can, uh, once we start the session, not now. Navin will take up the questions and he will answer it. Please note, this is purely, purely, purely for the physiotherapist, working physiotherapist. Uh, sorry to say, if there are any UG students are there, please exit from the meeting. Point one. Point two, we have a disclaimer note that will be displayed during the presentations. And if you are on a video is on, please switch off your video, except the moderator and the resource persons. Please switch off your video so that the network speed will be good. Okay. Once again, welcome everybody. Over to Dr. Navin, the moderator, to go ahead. Okay. We are good to start. Uh, thanks, Dr. Dana. Dr. Dananjay is our host. He is the secretary of uh, Bangalore Physiotherapist Network, BPN. Myself, Dr. Navin KS. Uh, I am vice president, BPN. Uh, uh, today, we are on a serious uh, talk uh, that uh, we have uh, come through this pandemic and uh, we were uh, fo uh, in forced lockdown. I think uh, lockdown is going to be relaxed now. So what next? So uh, if you, we, we, few of us are planning to start clinics and OPDs. So is the right time that we discuss uh, how we go about things? To start the practice and uh, how to go about with the physiotherapy, I mean, clinical infection control methods. So, we have a wonderful uh, topic today of physiotherapy practice suggestions. So, we are going to make some suggestions today, uh, which is compiled by the expert committee headed by Dr. Partha. And um, we'll have a panel discussion today. Uh, we have a microbiologist joined in. So, we'll have more technical answers to it. And uh, of course, about the guidelines and suggestions. And uh, Dr. Nandan is also here uh, to speak about. So let me introduce our uh, panelists for today. To start with, uh, we have Dr. Partha Sarathi with the 17 years of experience in physiotherapy clinical practice and academics. And he's the chief, uh, uh, chief of neuro rehabilitation Ramaya Memorial Hospital. And he's uh, the director POS Rehab Bangalore. And uh, we have Dr. Nandan Kumar, 
uh, with 20 years of uh, 20 years of experience and he is bpn executive president uh, can we have a slide if you have dr patha yes boss what is on do you have the slide yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay you can share the slide Get to see it? Yes, yes. First the title, then the disclaimers, then the profiles. You can go ahead. Huh, no, uh, put the slide of the panelists. So do you have that? Yeah, yeah. Go okay. back to uh, Go back to yourself. <laughs> ah, we are done. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is Dr. Parth Sarthi, as I uh, already uh, told you. He's with 17 years of experience and he's the chief physiotherapist. Next slide, please. And uh, Dr. Nandan, uh, uh, as everybody knows, uh, 20 years of experience, BPN Executive President, is the Chief Physiotherapist in Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Center that he have, owns uh, in JP Nagar. He is also Head of Quality and Accreditation uh, Infection Control Team at Rajshekar Multi Speciality Hospital. So he's got experience in um, infection control also. Uh, next slide, please. And here we have uh, Dr. Pratab. Uh, Dr. Yeji Pratab is a professor of microbiology and a registrar of academics in MS Ramaya Medical College with 16 years of teaching experience, has uh, 12 uh, public publications to his kitty, and uh, is doing extensive work in hospital infection control, medical education, uh, quality systems in healthcare. And uh, uh, welcome, sir. Welcome to the uh, webinar today. Thank you. I welcome all the three panelists uh, today. And we are good to go. Uh, over to Dr. Parth Sarthi. Okay. Yes, Parth, go ahead. Hi, guys. Good evening. I welcome you all to the webinar here. So I'm glad that there are many of you who are, who are interested in. Uh, Running this in the current times of uh, COVID, right? Right. So, uh, we would like to share the disclaimer here first. These are only the suggested guidelines to the individual physiotherapists. Uh, guidelines: individual physiotherapist discretion is warranted. Opening physiotherapist physiotherapy OPDs depends on the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India guidelines. So, we are not suggesting to anybody that you can start and practice the way you would want to. And we're only suggesting how you can practice, not anything beyond that. You all can go through that for 10, 15 seconds, right? Right. Okay. Today that I would like to begin. Uh, what are the physiotherapy suggestions during the prevailing panel, the final panel discussion? We all will present some of our views first and then we'll discuss and move on. So the contents will be the introductions, why we are doing this webinar, what is the reason for it. Uh, then we thought there is a need for uh, standard operating procedure outpatient physiotherapy practice, which I would be taking some of the ideas of the right? So, under my topic, uh, I'll be talking about the trials of the department of doctors. What do we treat? Where do we treat? And what might be the machines and accessories that can be used in the clinical practice? Right? So, these are only the suggestions that we can move forward. Right? right. So, as we all know, these are the times, the times of precaution, of prevention for the spread of the COVID 19. Right? We have been very anxious, but of course, we've got to be uh, cautious also. Uh, at the same time, we need to be uh, remembering what we are supposed to do. There are many patients who are non COVID group of patients, and in the future, we'll be having a lot of COVID 19 patients in the future that requires physiotherapy. There is a lot of evidence saying that physiotherapy is required to accelerate the recovery of patients. Who Enhance the health outcomes of this population. So, we all know that exercise always increases the immunity of the people better, which can always fight the infection. 
So it becomes our responsibility as a healthcare community to address the problem. To address the problem is rehabilitating the patients who are being treated, right? So at the same time, we cannot outdo the risk of infections to the healthcare community. The risk is very high. There is a lot of ambiguity. People are still worried and not know what to do. Right? There is not ambiguity. So the time, we need to balance the healthcare service to the community, and at the same time, ensure the safety of the healthcare provider and the related staff that are working with the patients. Right? I hope you all agree. We need to be doing our jobs, and at the same time, we need to ensure care of ourselves as well and the people who are working in the clinic or OPD departments of the hospitals where they, they, the risk of infections has to be minimized or avoided. So there was a need, there is a need to develop standard operating procedures which became inevitable. Oh guys, uh, I think I had to do one second. Okay. Who is drawing the smileys and all here? Yeah. Great, yeah. I think if okay. you do some idiotic things like this, you'll be thrown out of the meeting. Yeah, we'll know who is doing that actually, right? I okay. know the guy who's doing it. I know the guy. We'll know it. it. Okay, right. So, what? clear that and uh, switch off the annotation. No, no, no. Tarte, it won't block it. Okay, who can do the annotation stuff here? Right. Okay. Right. So there was a need to develop standard operating procedures, right? So that we can practice safely, right? So as network, along with the network people who worked along with us to develop this, then I has mentioned it. I would also mention some senior physios, like no, Professor Savita Ravindra from Ramaya and Sundar Kumar, the pediatric physiotherapist from Bangalore, helped us in uh, designing or uh, developing some of the guidelines, SOP practices for uh, clinical physiotherapy practice. So, I'd like to say again that the SOP is not a mandatory protocol for practice. It is not a replacement for the SOPs that are developed and designed by the healthcare organizations. Everybody is working on the SOPs of practice. We are only suggesting to those individuals who are not having the support of the administrative systems or infection control teams like many hospitals have. There are many physiotherapy and rehabilitation centers who had to work all by themselves. Without this might be of use to their clinical practice. So this is that's why this effort has gone in. So it is left to the clinic owners and the physiotherapists to follow it or not to follow it, right? So the source of information is here. Here is from World Health Organizations, AIMS, New Delhi, and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare websites. Okay, this is not that just be randomly designed and developed and stuff like that. These are simple uh, uh, procedures that can be followed, right? Right. Okay. So uh, the first component that we all have to do is uh, whenever the patient comes to your center or rehab center or physio small physiotherapy clinics is the triage. The triage is a process where we would see all the patients who are coming individually or in a group like not sometimes right we segregate them whether is this patient fit enough to be given the physiotherapy and this in this current times or is he if he's having any respiratory problems or if he's having any other red flags like he's traveling from uh, red zones red areas we can move it to move the patient to move the patient move the patient send the patient to a flu clinic or fever clinic Right? So for that, we need to have a declaration form that is filled by the patient. And we should also ask the patient's attender as well to fill the declaration form. So I need to share the other uh, uh, declaration form here. I'll stop the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation 
and then uh, share the uh, declaration form as well. Parsa, any issues? Yeah. Do you guys see the declaration form now? I can't see your screen. You can't see it on screen. No, no, no. Not shared it. Not shared it. Yeah. Do you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Right. So I'm going to expand here. Okay. So uh, it is in self declaration form. The patient or the uh, friend of his team, or the if nobody, if the clinician is not having a friend of his team, they have to fill it or get the patient to fill it or the demographic details and take the history of travel, right? With the travel, in, the, in the three, four weeks, we used to take the uh, history of the travel from different countries and all of that. With the travel, even within the country, also now it's very important. With their travel from red zones, containment zones, and all that. The travel history is yes, then we need to know where and date of travel and duration of stay, all of that. Then history of travel and contact with any person in your containment areas, like your neighboring containment zones. Every city has containment zones and red alert areas. So we need to know where they are there. If they travel somewhere there, we need to be sure about when and where. And in the last 14 days, did you come across in close contact with anyone with fever, cough and breathlessness? We need to be aware of that. And are you suffering from any of these symptoms? Fever, cough, and respiratory symptoms like breathlessness and uh, respiratory issues like that. And it's always better to check the body temperatures, infrared thermometers at the clinic, right? And have you taken any medicines? So we, we thought we would like to add this point here primarily because sometimes some patients would take paracetamol and come to you, come to you, and the temperatures might be low. So uh, the declaration form here is mainly to state that the patient has declared that he is uh, in good shape so that he can take the medical treatments, right? So we need to have this kind of declaration forms for your own safety, for any for your future references, right? Have you downloaded Arogya Setu app? I think you all must be aware that Arogya Setu app is uh, put forward by the government of India, which uh, will be an evidence for us that the patient has declared that where he stands, whether he's coming from the red alert zones or he's having breathlessness and all of that, it will be an evidence for us that uh, this guy, this patient has declared whatever he said is right, right? So we got to do this declaration form from the patient as well as as well, right? The note is the patient has arrived from red zones and all that, please advise him to visit the OPD after 14 days, okay? If he's living in the red zones and and the body temperature is above 100 degree Fahrenheit, avoid the treatment. You got to explain it to the patient. Do not outright reject that we will not be in a position to treat you. If the patient has patient paracetamol, then avoid it, ask him to come back the day after day later and stuff like that, right? So if the patient has fever, cough, respiratory symptoms, request them to visit the nearby fever clinics. And we should be aware of the fever clinics that are there in your neighborhood so that you can suggest them to go there, right? So then this is the declaration form. I'd go back to the PowerPoint again. Right. So, and next is after the triage is ready, if the patient is not having any of these red flags that you think you should deny the treatment to them, then you would take the patient in, right? And then uh, they come to the front office. They're already with the front office, right? The front office team will ensure that they come with the mask. If there is no mask, no treatment. Please ensure that, right? And if they do not have a mask, please give them a mask, sell them a mask, let them buy masks in your clinic. Let uh, you guys, we all should have masks at our station so that if the patient comes with no mask, the attender, we should allow them to purchase one. 
The team fills the assessment, the front office, the part, the sheets of the patient cards that you would want to have. And then the patient is not given any of these cards or papers, right? So it is given directly to the physiotherapist. The seating is spaced by six feet for patient attenders. Advice not to have the attenders if the patient can come to the clinic all by themselves. All right? Then, SOP for outpatient practices. Who do we treat? We have treat, right? So who are the patients that we are supposed to be treating? All of these patients, ortho, neuro, pediatric, sports, geriatric patients, required essential physiotherapy needs. What are these essential physiotherapy needs, right? So there are some conditions where which can be avoided, but there are some situations where we cannot deny treatment to this population. For example, some of them are the post-fracture rehabilitation patients, post-surgery rehabilitation, people requiring this, I mean, people with acute pain who cannot take painkillers, post-neurological disorders who have acquired recently, and some of those who definitely need, otherwise their um, mobility and their quality of life would be compromised very badly. And essentially physical for those conditions are the pediatrics. In pediatrics, which is one of the critical areas, a lot of you would be having a lot of problems in handling children. Children have other kind of combination of issues when we treat these patients. So non-compromised, children with non-compromised cardiovascular and pulmonary issues can be taken. Cerebral palsy, GMFC is 4 and 5. Proceed with caution for this population and kids with good mental health. And of course, any other conditions at the discretion of the clinician can be taken up for the treatment. Right? So, where do we treat? We can treat in the exercise therapy area, which can be disinfected easy. Do not take them into the areas where it becomes very tedious and difficult to disinfect the area. Let's say a therapeutic gym might be a difficult place to disinfect it's very easy, right? So find the zone of your know, clinic which can be, even the floor has to be cleaned, disinfected frequently, right? Yeah. Therapy couches and pillows that have resin would be advised to practice on them because resin is a surface which can be disinfected easily. Having a paper roll and all might become difficult, but somebody feels that that is feasible for them and maintain the uh, or decontaminate the areas where they use that. But advice is please follow the or uh, use the resin uh, couches, I mean the, uh, the beds and the pillows which have resin covers. Then uh, machines that can be disinfected easily are the ultrasound therapy, the laser, hot packs, FT, no, no vacuum because we all know why, like, no, there is a lot of water connection in there and it is like when we don't really clean the tubes, right? The tension stimulators. Cycle treadmill, parallel bars, and physio bars can be disinfected easily, right? The pediatric tools, the ties that can be easily. Patients, you can advise the patients to carry their own tubes and bands, and also advise to carry their fresh linen every day if there is a need for uh, wet spreads and then the towels, so that it becomes easier for us to handle. And it becomes really, really difficult for us to provide uh, every patient. The fresh linen. There are many patients who will demand I would like to have, uh, you know, uh, fresh linen every time they come. So please tell them these are the times where you got to carry your own stuff so that you ensure your safety for yourself as well. And that becomes easier for us to handle it as well. So I think uh, that's where I would end. The most important components uh, further down will be taken uh, by Nanda here, and uh, Dr. Pradab is there to guide us through. So have a Safe practice and thank you guys for coming in here. So another thing is we'll be putting the guidelines uh, in the uh, Bangalore Physiotherapist Network website by Monday. Very comprehensive standard operating procedures will be put forward. So step by step, each step that can be followed or that should be followed in a clinic in order to minimize the chances for infection and decontaminations will be shared to you all in the website, all right? Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Partha. It was wonderful So uh, you, that you put points uh, so well. I think we'll go over to Dr. Nandan Kumar, listen to him, and then uh, 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 we will go over for some questions also. So, Dr. Nandan, what do you have to say? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, host? Nandan. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, I would like to continue from where uh, Partha has left. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, infection control practices in a physiotherapy center. 
are you guys able to see my slides yes yeah sure okay so uh, continuing from partha's topic uh, as partha has already uh, briefed you about the standard operating procedures till the patient comes to your clinic so i would like to tell you about uh, the scenarios of uh, patients who would you you would be generally see just a little overlap of what uh, partha sathi has told the scenarios are patient may have a there are two possible scenarios the patient may have respiratory problems and may require home care due to multiple comorbid conditions so physiotherapists will be treating patients even at home so i will also tell you what you should do for a home care uh, patient the second one is patients may not be having any exposure to covid and uh, the treatment of the such a patient will be in a non covid hospital or you may have to treat the patient in the ward or in the physiotherapy department of the hospital where you work or uh, patients may be coming to private uh, physiotherapy clinics so these are the scenarios which we generally see so now generally when you go for home care especially patients who are having respiratory illness so what are the general recommendations uh, which is uh, which is told see mind you when i am talking about recommendation these recommendations are who recommendations the wcpt and the ministry of health and uh, family welfare they have given recommendations about this 